Today we are going to be learning how to build a vintage marketplace without code using bubble.io. Uh, we have the usual sign up login features, we can add a listing uh, feature as well and uh, we have this beautiful gallery of all these kind of items available to sell and we can contact the seller so if you click the seller uh, their email is copied to our clipboard all right so let's get started so first of all we are going to create a new application okay you can name it anything uh, my All right, so uh, this is a directory listing. It's external, just playing around and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing is you'll see an assistant. Okay, uh, it will steer you through a few steps, uh, but let's just start with a blank page uh, and just avoid kind of like uh, any kind of extra features. Let's just start with a blank page, okay. So, okay, so now we have a blank canvas, all right? So the first thing, let's explore the overall, overall editor, okay? Uh, we have lots of these tabs on the left. Let's start with the design tab. Now the design tab is quite straightforward. Uh, it's just drag and drop, okay? However, there's a catch and I'll explain the catch in a bit. So if you wanted a text, you can drag drop a text. If you wanted a button, you can place it. If we wanted a video element, for example, if you wanted a map. So these are just the visual elements, all right? So the design tab is related to what you see, all right? So now a web application consists of three parts. What you see, uh, what happens when you click something, and uh, what you save in the database, okay? So the design tab is linked with what I see when I see a visual application. So this, all this application is what I see, all right? Now the workflow tab, if what happens when I click this button, what happens when I click this button, what happens when I click this button, that is, that would be in the workflow tab, all right? Now all this data is saved somewhere, okay? We have it in the database. We have it here in the database. So this is uh, going to be in the data tab, okay? Styles, uh, are linked with how a particular element looks and feels. So let's say we want to change the color. If you use styles throughout our application, if you want to change the color, uh, we can change it in one place and apply the style throughout the application. Plugins, very useful. Uh, Bubble has a large library of plugins that we can uh, add. So just random things, anything, the API connector, icons, toolbox, lots of different types of plugins exist, okay. Uh, settings, this is where we will uh, do things like add a payment plan, uh, boost the capacity of our servers, add more storage, uh, add a domain so that our app shows up. At the moment it's on uh, tutorial.bubbleapps.io, I'd like it to be vintagemarketplace.com, that's where I will do the settings tab is where I will look here, uh, we'll do tweak these settings. And log is to look uh, historical as to once an app is live. Uh, what happened to the app, how many workflows were running, what are the logs, like who's doing what throughout the app. All right, so now that we've explored the, a little bit about the editor, uh, let's start by making our page. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, Bubble at the moment has two modes of design. I'm sure in a couple of months, it'll switch the primary mode to the new responsive engine, but uh, we are uh, the new, design editor is kind of hidden behind this tab. So I'm gonna just upgrade my page, upgrade to responsive beta. I will not uh, copy because uh, page because I don't have anything. All right, so, okay. So now the canvas is using the new responsive engine and I do encourage you to view this video as well. Okay, I've watched it already. Okay, so we now have a blank canvas and where do we start our application? Okay, we can start here, but I think this will get a bit complicated. So let's start with something simple, uh, a basic sign up page and a basic login page, and then we'll end here, okay? So what does a sign up page look like? Okay, sign up to buy and sell, email. So what do we have in our elements, in our design tab? 
sign up to buy and sell, email, an input field, password, an input field, a button and another button. Okay. Okay. So first of all, let's create a new page. Okay. Sign up. We're going to clone from the index so that just because so that our uh, page is already on the new responsive engine and we don't have to upgrade it again and again. Okay. So now just a few things I usually like to keep the page canvas size 1280. Uh, height can vary depending on the page. That's not an issue. Okay. So now there are four types of page layouts. One is the fixed layout where we can drag and drop things and it's a static canvas, but it's not responsive. So what that means is that it won't shrink down uh, on a phone that well. So we don't really want to do that. Okay. So we'd like our app to be a bit responsive. So we're going to use a different page layout. We clicked on the page, clicked on the layout tab. And now we're looking at, okay, there are four types of layouts, a row, a column, a line to parent. At the moment, we're going to focus on column. Later on, we're going to look at row as well. Okay. So let's just start with the column. Okay. All right. So now what do we need? Text, text, and a couple of inputs. Okay, so let's add a text here. Okay, you'll see that uh, in this layout mode, I can't just place something here. It automatically snaps over there. This is because it, we are in a column layout and things are stacking in a column. Okay, so sign up to buy and sell. Okay. Uh, we'd like this to be a bit larger, so we're going to switch to a heading style. Uh, in the text elements layout tab, uh, we can uncheck the fixed width. Okay, and now we have a full line option. Okay, and what we can do is we can add a bit, the way to move things is through a bit of margins and a bit of page structure. All right, so let's just add some margin from the top. Okay, and some margin from the left and right. Okay. Now our next element that we need is just email. Uh, let's add all the elements and then start sizing them. So we need email. We need input to type the email. Then we need another text label, uh, which is password. Uh, then we need another input. Okay. So now we've added a text element. This one is a bit large. So let's shrink it a bit. If we make it, if we make text elements zero pixel height and tick this box fit height to content, it just hugs the element a bit. So we have a password as well. Let's make this zero and it hugs the element. Now all four of our elements are here. We can use the shift key and select all of them and give them a 40 pixel margin on the left. So all four of our elements are have a bit of margin. Now we'll just tune this up a little bit, uh, add a bit of margin from the top, maybe 20. Uh, in bubble, I've found that just sticking to five, 10, 20, 40, it's just an easier system. Okay. So give this another 20. We need a button to, uh, sign up and we need another button to already have an account. Okay, that will switch to the login page. Okay, so let's tune this up a bit. Uh, add the margin on the left, 40 pixels, 40 pixels, add a bit of a top margin, add a bit of a top margin. The size is too small. So let's just make it a consistent size throughout. Uh, consistency just helps overall. So 250 is a good size. Let's do it. 250, 250. Now both buttons look the same. So let's just change this to a different style. So let's use here, lose this. Okay. So now we have sign up to buy and sell. Looks pretty similar to what our original tutorial was. And if you click the preview button, this is how we actually just preview. What did we just make? Okay. Did we make something correctly or not? Okay. So you just click the preview button and you can immediately see a change. Uh, let's say, for example, I, I want to call it sign up to buy and sell vintage goods. I made a change. This is my editor canvas. 
and if I switch tabs, I'm not clicking preview. All I do is I switch tabs and I see we just updated this page. Please refresh to get the latest version. Okay, so you just click refresh. Okay, sign up to buy and sell vintage goods. Okay, so we've done quite a bit of design work. All right, uh, just to recap, uh, our page had a bit of a column layout. And as a result, all the elements stack in a vertical column. We placed a text element, another text element, an input element, another text element, another input, and uh, a couple of buttons. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, uh, we've done the basics of design, we're gonna add a workflow. Okay, so when somebody clicks sign up, what do I want them to do? Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the appearance tab and click start edit workflow. Okay, this will switch me to the workflow tab and it says when button sign up is clicked, click here to add an action. So these are the steps that will run when the sign up button is clicked. And you can see the first action itself is sign the user up. So in Bubble, out of the box, we get a huge list of actions and you can add, install plugins to get more and more actions. So for example, email, just send an email. This is how, uh, and we just add the email kind of do ccbc subject and emails will go so there's a huge list of actions at the moment we're going to use sign the user up because that's the action that we were kind of using okay that's what we're doing so now which uh let's look at our design tab and click here so this input a let's use correct naming input email and we can change the content format of an input type element uh, to be many things. So we have like text, US phone, percentage, currency, euro, lots of different types. So this formatting helps and kind of just uh, adds a bit of a validation rule to the system. So we're going to change it to type email. We're going to tweak the placeholder. Example at example.org. Uh, similar for the password. Uh, we don't want password to be plain text. Okay. If I type my password, my lovely password. It, uh, it's not that nice to look like a password. So I'm going to change the content format to password. Okay. I'm also going to name this element to uh, password. This is just helps over time uh, to develop a consistent good habit of naming elements correctly. So now if I click, uh, if I start typing here, uh, I don't see any uh, kind of elements here. It's, it's quite nice and lovely. And uh, if this is not an email, uh, there's a red border around it. Okay. And if this is an email, all of a sudden, there's no red input error there. Okay. So we added some validation and tweak these. Now back to the workflow. So we did have a when button sign up is clicked, sign the user up. Now we need to tell bubble, okay, what's the email? What's the password? So we're just going to select input email value uh, or input password value and that's it okay so when button sign up clicks this action will happen and uh, we'll get an entry in the database okay so if we refresh our page uh, test at test.com one two three uh, we click sign up there's a little progress bar at the top that happens and we've signed up basically uh, now we don't have any kind of feedback, so let's add some feedback as well. Okay, so feedback in Bubble can be simple alert type element. You click alert. Okay, you place it here. So thank you for signing up. Okay, uh, what we do is we position this alert at the top. Okay. So now once somebody signs up, this is a bit of a special type of element that is not always visible, okay? So let's refresh and you'll see that it's not really always visible, okay? Uh, even though it shows up in the canvas here. So what I want is I want this alert to show up when I sign up. So I'm gonna use the same sign up workflow, okay? And I'm going to uh, show a message in an alert box, okay? And the alert is thank you. So the next time I uh, sign up, uh, test to add uh, one, two, three, click sign up and it says, thank you for signing up. 
okay and the alert disappears okay so now we have signed up how do we verify we have signed up okay so the let's switch to the data tab and see what's there okay so now in bubble you have one you can add your database and there's not nothing to be worried about a database it kind of has a bit of a complex feel but once you get the hang of it uh, add a bit of a listing database and you'll see, realize that it's quite simple and straightforward so the user data type is a special data type and we have uh, so within the data tab we have a few other tabs let's explore the first one data types and app data so I'll give an analogy of a spreadsheet okay so if you have a spreadsheet where your top row the header it kind of defines all the columns okay we have a user we have an email we have modified date create date slug so ignore slug okay so we have a user sheet okay let's just make it sheets.new and we have a uh, user sheet okay, user and we have email uh, created date modified date so now we did sign up with two users and so this is the header this is a bit special okay so the header is defined in data types the actual contents are in app data so let's switch to the app data type click all users there are this is our actual data so if we want to define what we are storing we go to the data types tab and if you want to check what is actually currently stored we go to the app data tab okay so at the moment we see that two of our users were created and they are in the database uh, we are still stuck here in our page okay so what next all right so if we go back to our original example uh, we can sign up we also have we can log in already have an account so we click here and we switch to a login but to buy and sell a login page okay so let's just quickly make this login page as well and it's going to be quite easy because what we're going to do is we're going to use our existing sign up page so we're going to add a new page here we're going to call it login and we're going to clone it from the sign up page so this will just copy the sign up page and name it to login and we're here okay so just to verify we're on the login page not on the sign up page now so let's start changing the text here login to buy and sell vintage goods okay and if we have email we have input email password password sign up this is actually going to be login and the secondary button will be don't have an account okay to steer people to sign up all right so now our workflows have also copied over uh, but the workflow is wrong uh, it says when button login is clicked because the the button name has changed to login uh, but the actual actions taking place are sign the user up so we don't need to use sign the user up we need to use login okay so we're going to remove this workflow and we're going to search for log the user in or log the user out is a difference so log the user in so when button login is clicked we click log the user in and we show a message alert okay so one helpful interesting tip here is that uh, if there is a mistake through in your bubble app it show up here in the issue tracker okay so okay so we are in log the user in uh, we need to provide some parameters to this action and the parameters are input email value input password value and this user is now logged in okay so if I click preview now I switch to the login page and let's try and log in and see if it works okay so test to at ascii.com I think my password was one two three and click login thank you for signing up so our message that has been copied from the sign up page is a bit different so let's look at our alerts so as I said alerts is a bit of a special one it's not 
uh, always visible. So at the moment it's not visible. So we can't see where our element is. And so the element tree is something to be aware of in the design tab is this is where all the uh, elements on the page exist. So sometimes you have elements which are hidden. So they are still here, uh, but they're just hidden from view at the moment. So that's what, that's how you find uh, the elements. So we do have the alert. Thank you for, uh, no, not thank you. It's more like welcome to vintage marketplace. Okay. So uh, our alert has grown in size. So let's just tweak its size a bit through the layout tab. Uh, it is a fixed width. We could uncheck this box. So it just kind of expands and gets the whole kind of image seat. Uh, the whole width of the page, which is also fine. So let's try again. So uh, test to add as effect.com, one, two, three, login. Welcome to Vintage Marketplace. Okay, so now we can log in, we can sign up. Uh, let's add a few little navigation parameters because we can't sign up and log in back and forth from these pages. So what do we want these buttons to do? Okay, don't have an account. Okay, let's see. So I want, uh, I'm gonna click start edit workflow. Uh, I want that when I click this button, I navigate to the sign up page. Okay, so I'm gonna click uh, when don't have an account button is clicked, uh, go to page. Or I, I know because I've been bubbling for a couple of years now. So let's just remove this. And so we have the different types of uh, workflow actions. Uh, we have data related actions, account related, navigation related. So we're looking for the navigation related go to page. Okay. And in the go to page, we have a different set of parameters that we need to pass to this action. Uh, the destination when this button is clicked is the sign up page. Okay. So if I click preview, now all of a sudden this button has come to life. Uh, I can click don't have an account and I'll redirect it to the sign up page. I haven't added a workflow here, so I can't, this button doesn't do anything. So let's just fix that. Okay. Sign up. Uh, let's switch to the sign up page, uh, switch to the design tab, this button, uh, double click and it opens these properties. So start edit workflow and let's just, uh, again, navigation go to page this time we are on the sign up page so we want to go to the login page okay so let's just see so sign up uh, we can sign up already have an account we click log in to buy and sell vintage goods okay login don't have an account so we can go back and forth between login and sign up pages so up until now uh, what have we learned we've learned how to make a page uh, add a few elements to the page, move them around a little bit, uh, add a few simple little workflows to our page. So now let's uh, imp reflect a bit on what we were trying to make. Okay, so we've been trying to make a buy and sell marketplace. Okay, so this gallery is generally the final thing that we'll make. So now first of all, we can sign up or we can log in. So we've built these now already. Okay, so now the, the key third page that we need to build is the add your listing page. Okay, so if you click this, add your listing, uh, this is how somebody will add a listing to our marketplace, submit a listing, okay? So let's see, uh, this is also quite a simple page. Uh, we could potentially just clone our login sign up page to make it easier and change a few elements. So let's just do that. Let's create our design first. Then we'll look at the workflows and how to save the title, the description and the image in the database. Okay. So let's see. Now we have, uh, we're going to go, we are going to add a new page. This is you add your listing. Uh, we're going to clone from the sign up page. Okay. And now we have, we are on the add your listing page and let's just tweak it to uh, 
add your listing okay and in this instance we don't have an email we are asking for a title uh, the type of this content is not it's just a simple text not a title of your listing okay it's not an email so let's just uh, rename these correctly as well uh, we're not asking for a password okay we are asking for a description description okay uh, now uh, one thing the description is not a single line input element the description is a multi-line input element so let's scroll down to our left column here these are all the different types of inputs that we have in bubble uh, by default so you can use plugins to add more types so for example a plugin could add a calendar or some other complex kind of element a visual element so let's see uh, date picker drop down lots of things what we are looking for is the multi-line input so we're going to click multi-line input once we're going to click anywhere on the canvas okay so now we have a multi-line input here let's double click okay and we need to move this around here we can't use drag and drop in the previous kind of engine we could just drag and drop elements but it has its it had its issues uh, the new engine uh, has a little bit of an uphill learning curve but once you kind of get familiar with how to move elements around and place them in rows and columns then you realize that oh this is way better especially when it comes to responsive design uh, a design that kind of shrinks all the way down to mobile and also looks correctly on a laptop okay so we're going to double click our multi-line input a we're going to switch to the layout okay and here these options make first previous next last so if i click make first it just jumped to the top so let's click next 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 okay and let's add our same 40 pixel margin and all of a sudden our multi-line input is in the right place okay so uh, our alignments are a little bit off so let's make this uh, 300 pixel as well let's make this 300 pixel as well we don't need the fourth button this button needs to say submit listing and we need one more element which is the picture uploader okay so we are going to upload uh, an image so there are two elements that can do this in bubble the file uploader and the picture uploader subtly different we'll just use a picture uploader in our scenario okay so let's click the picture uploader once click anywhere on the canvas okay so now we have our uploader image uploader we're going to double click switch to the layout tab and move them around okay so click previous uh, let's add a bit of margin from the top one uh, a bit of margin from the left uh, we can make this a similar size as well and now we have our add your listing page with the title title of listing description description uh, a picture uploader and a submit listing button so we don't have enough space at the bottom so let's just click our page and increase the page height a little bit okay let's see that so let's see how this looks now so add your listing title description click to upload image submit let's see our original we just use submit listing and change the sizings a little bit so we're pretty close there okay so now we need to do something different on our button so initially the workflows we were exploring were related to the user which are like sign up login but now uh, the workflow that we need to do is to save data to the database okay so we need to save the title we need to save the description we need to save the image and uh, we need to do all that on this button click so let's try and uh, move to our data spreadsheet for a bit and understand a bit for con uh, context here so the first sheet in our database okay uh, tutorial database so the first sheet uh, is the user which has all our users okay the password is a hidden field a special field we don't see the password uh, bubble keeps it safe and secure in their systems now we need another sheet in our database where we'll save all the listings okay so let's just say we need another 
listings sheet and what are the types of things that we're saving uh so the header the column okay we're saving the title we're saving the description and we're saving the image these are the three things that we save so if we had our database in a spreadsheet uh we'll have one sheet for the users that we've saved in our marketplace and one sheet for all the listings that are saved in our marketplace okay and each particular iphone 6s uh some amazing phone and the actual image of the iphone uh and if we have another like telephone amazing sound so this is how our database is going to look like so this is going to be the disk the type of things that we're saving and these are the actual data so in bubble how do we map this spreadsheet as a database in bubble let's look so we're going to switch from our design tab to our data tab okay so we're going to within our data tab uh, just as a reminder app data is the actual data so app data is this data what we're going to define what we're saving so that's in custom data types okay so data types now user is a special type comes by default we're going to create a new one listings okay so let's add listings create okay so now our type has been created our sheet has been created but our header columns have not been created yet okay so our header columns are new fields here okay so create a new field okay this is the field called title and the type of field there are many different types of things that we can save in the database the type a number a date lots of things in our case the title is a text okay uh, let's make another field for the description okay uh, the type the type is again text okay and we have another field for the image of the listing and the type in this case can be an image all right so let's create that so now we've created our sheet okay our listings custom data type and we've created our header columns these three okay so now let's uh, we have the data structure in place now what do we need our button to do okay so we need our button to save the title the description and the image in this particular database okay so let's look at the workflow now sometimes it gets a bit confusing as to okay i'm designing i'm placing stuff in the database i'm doing things on a click but over time you get the hang of it as to where am i looking so on this button submit listing I'm going to click start edit workflow. Okay. Now these are our old ones from the sign up page because we copied our page. So let's remove these. Okay. Okay. So submit listing and we have nothing. So what do we want here to do? We want to create a row in our table. We, have, we want to create something in our database. So let's look. So here in the data related actions, we can create a new thing. If we already had a listing and wanted to edit it, we would make changes to a listing, okay? At the moment, we're creating a listing. So let's create a new thing. And now it's gonna ask what type of thing you're creating. So we're gonna create a listing table. This is our custom uh, data type, okay? And then we're gonna set the different fields that we wanna set here. So we're going to click set field. We know we have a title. So in our, we see these are the header columns that we've defined in the data tab that a listings type has description, image, title. So we see the same things in our workflow tab, uh, description, image, title. So we know the title and the title should be equal to our input element in the design tab. So our input element is input title. And we have another input element, multi-line input A, let's call it multi-line input description. Okay. And we have another uh, input. Oh, we forgot uh, a label here. We don't need that because we say click to upload an image. So then we don't really need a label here. Sorry. Okay. So in our picture uploader element, we have, let's call it 
uh, listing image okay back to our workflow tab okay so we create a new listing create a new thing it's of type listing and the title equals input title value set another field the description equals multi-line input descriptions value set another field image equals picture uploader listing image value okay now let's explore we can reference each input element here okay and we've picked the value but sometimes there's other uh, components provided by the input element as well so for example a picture uploader provides the file size okay or if it's uploading or not so these are extra parameters each input element has its own uh, various levels uh, so a map would provide something else a calendar would provide something else a date picker would provide something else in our case at the moment we're just saving these three in the database so now let's also uh, show an alert to thank our user okay show a message box in an alert in fact let's find where it is so this will be in i actually don't know here it is element actions so alert show message okay so I can show our message. The message itself actually is thank you for signing up and signing up. So we can change our message. We can scroll here. We can find our alert in our element tree. It's invisible. And let's hear thank you for submitting a listing. All right. Again, it's grown a line. So we're going to switch to the layout tab, uncheck the fixed width, and it expands to the whole page. All right okay so uh let's test this out okay so we click preview and we have our add your listing the title description image okay so let's see uh an amazing bike i have, uh, I have uh, Okay, so we add, click upload an image and let's find an image of a bicycle. Now that we've uploaded our image. Okay, so there we have an amazing bike, a description, and uh, we have our bike image here as well. Now, one of the uh, amazing features of Bubble is this debugger tab at the bottom. Okay, so let's just explore this a bit just click step by step okay now what this does is everything's gonna run step by step so whenever i write, i click some button it's gonna run step by step so i'm gonna click a button here submit listing and this tab appears okay and it's gonna pause everything's paused basically okay so i'm gonna click run next create a new listing this is an action that's running the type listing, I can see what I've passed uh, to my workflow action. And click run next, show message in alert, click run next. Thank you for submitting a listing. So this one's just uh, an interesting kind of step-by-step -step way of debugging uh, mistakes. So it did happen, even though our elements haven't reset. So this is because we are missing out uh, one particular workflow action. We have not asked the button to reset everything after a listing has been submitted. So let's switch to our workflow and add that. Uh, workflow, another action, what would it be called? Reset. So it says reset relevant inputs. So what this does, whatever inputs were used as part of this workflow, it will reset them. Okay, so let's add another listing and see if it starts working now. Uh, an amazing car this car is lovely so we're gonna upload an image of a car and see if it works let me see if I can pick the right image it's uploading there's a progress bar at the top yep we have an image of a car an amazing car this car is lovely let's click submit listing and see if our uh, uh, all our input elements reset or not and let's just explore this debugger let's click slow 
this time around. Last time we were checking step by step. Let's click slow. So submit listing. I'm just gonna run slowly by itself. I'm not doing anything. Reset relevant inputs happen and we're all reset now back to our original state. Okay, let's go back to normal mode. So let's see. So uh, we haven't displayed our, can our listings yet. Uh, we've only saved them to the, the database. Just to verify that we're on the right track, let's switch to the data tab and actually look at the data in the app data tab and see how we're looking. So we're now we now have another sheet here. All users was our original, all listings is the one that we're looking for. So see, now we have two entries in our database. Uh, an amazing car, an amazing bike with the image, very tiny image. We could potentially, uh, no, it doesn't work. No worries. So, uh, all right, so let's now take a step back and revise what did we just do? So we created our design, add listing title, we added another input element, a multi-line input, uh, a picture uploader, we changed our workflows, uh, we created a custom data type, listings, uh, we added the fields that we needed, analogy back to our spreadsheet, we had the user data type, we had the listings data type, we have our title, okay, these are the fields that are defined here, description, image, title, and uh, we have two rows uh, now, okay. Uh, and we tweak the workflow action. So when submit listing is clicked, we create a new thing. We show a message in an alert box. We reset relevant inputs, all right. So now uh, after submitting a listing, uh, now what do we, let's go back to our original uh, app that we were trying to build. We're making a whole vintage marketplace. All right, so uh, we have made the sign up page, we have made the login page, we have made the add your listing page, we have checked our users are in the table, we have checked our listings are in the database. Uh, now let's make this uh, front gallery page, okay? So let's see. So this gallery page is on, uh, on the index page, the first page that we were starting, the blank page, okay? On the, let's switch to the index page switch to the design tab let's just see what's the size of this page and what the layout of this page is so the layout is fixed uh, we've been using the column layout throughout this tutorial up until now we will use the row layout in a while but at the moment we're using the column layout and 1280 is a magic number when it comes to designing bubble apps uh, it's divisible, divisible by 320, so 320, 320, 320, 320, that's 1280. And uh, when it comes to responsive design, uh, let's just call it a magic number for now, okay? So what do we need here in our canvas? Uh, let's start with the title, okay? Let's click the text element and let's uh, add vintage marketplace. This is of a type heading, okay? We're gonna switch to the layout tab and expand it a bit, 200 is too less. Let's just tick this box and it's too big now. Okay, it's gonna expand. So, and let's also just give it a margin of 40 pixels from the top, 40 from the left, 40 from the right. So now we have our vintage marketplace uh, title. So we want this lovely gallery to display data from our database. Okay, how will we do that? So in Bubble, uh, there's this container type uh, called repeating group, okay? This is a special type that actually fetches data from the database and displays it in a certain uh, format, okay? So we're gonna click repeating group and I'm gonna click here. So now we have this repeating group, okay? So repeating groups are very uh, powerful uh, and also very configurable, okay? So text elements, they're powerful, configurable, lots of things you can do with text, lots of things you can do with button, but repeating groups are on a whole different level, okay? So it can be quite easy to get lost in the type of layouts and formats that you can display. So for example, uh, at what we see like this, is a gallery view we can use for repeating groups, but we can also use repeating groups for horizontal scroll, just vertical scroll with one column, 
a table. We can do all sorts of things. So let's uh, see how this goes. Uh, in the appearance tab, so here's, uh, in fact, in the layout tab, let's move this around a bit. 40, 40, 40. Okay, and uncheck this fixed width. So now we have this repeating group expand all around. Okay, so in the appearance tab, uh, we define the type of content and the data source. Okay, so the type of content that we're displaying is listings from the database. Okay, so we're gonna switch. We have lots of different types of contents, text, number, everything. Uh, the user is the special type and listings is the one that we're looking for. Okay, so now we've told that we're looking for listings, uh, but we haven't told where to find them. And that's what we define in data source. Okay, so in data source, if we click here, uh, we can fetch the data from the database and that fetch is called do a search for. Okay, so it's gonna do a search for, what type am I doing a search for? I'm doing a search for of type listings. Okay, and now, so this is what this is gonna do is it's gonna search for all the listings in the database. Okay, and it's gonna provide them to this repeating group element type. Okay, so now repeating groups, uh, in fact, let's just add it. And if I show you, you'll probably make uh, find it easy. Let's just add a little text element here. Okay, notice how it says edit me, edit me, edit me, edit me. Okay, there's multiple because this is, uh, the, we're defining one row and the rest are repeated depending on the data source. Okay, so let's click uh, a particular text and here, instead of edit me, we're gonna insert dynamic data. Okay, we're inserting dynamic data from the database. Okay, so we're gonna look at current cells listings. Okay, and current cells listings title. Okay, so what we just did, okay, let's recap a bit because repeating groups can be a bit complex. So the repeating group has a type of content listings. It has a type of data source search for listings. And within a search for listings, we tell it, we add a text element and we've told it we have this special type here, current cell listings. Okay, so each cell has a current cells listings reference and listings title. Let's click preview and see what it looks like. Okay, so we have an amazing bike, an amazing car because we're only displaying titles. If I switch to the spreadsheet uh, as to what we just did in our repeating group. So let me just add a tab here, repeating group. Okay, so we have all sorts of different formats of repeating group, uh, but we are doing a search in the listings table and displaying something. Okay, so if I, in spreadsheet, in Google Sheets, if I click equal to, and I do a search by clicking the listings tab, and I click this particular uh, cell and click enter. So in my repeating group table, I now have See how this happened? Okay, so th this is my repeating group. I was referencing the database. Each cell, I, de I defined just one cell. Okay, let's do it again. I just defined one cell and I dragged down to bring more data from the cell. Let's do this again, just to, okay, let's uh, call TV, phone, car, let's see. Now in our repeating group, see all the cells have appeared. So we've only defined the first cell to reference the listings sheet and that title. Okay, back to bubble. Okay, so we saved data in the database and now we're displaying it as in, as in the repeating group where the repeating group is of type listings. The data source, we told it to search for all the listings in the database and then we're defining one cell, okay? Now in defining one cell, we're defining, we're saying current cells listings title, okay? If we add another text element here and we call it current cells listings description, 
we're going to start seeing the description. Okay, let's click the preview button and see how it looks. So we now have an amazing bike and the description here. Okay, so if now we want to display an image, let's click an image element. And this particular repeating group at the moment is of type fixed. That's why we can use uh, uh, the drag and drop and mechanism. We're going to switch to a column layout where we can kind of move things around. It's uh, the fixed layout type allows us to drag and drop. Okay. And again, in the image, we, we, we need to define uh, where what image we're fetching from the database or in this particular cell. So let's click dynamic image here, insert dynamic data. Okay, something glitched. Insert dynamic data, current cells listings, image. Okay, so let's click preview and see what this looks like. There we have it. We have the title, the description, we have the image. Okay, it doesn't look like our nice little gallery here, but that's because we haven't tweaked the repeating group with the right settings yet. Okay, so let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to avoid using the fixed layout. We're going to use a column layout. Okay, so all of a sudden, all these three things are now in the column layout. Okay, so let's move them up and down a bit. So in the cell title, uh, we're going to move it up. So the title first, the image next and the description afterwards title image description okay oh we have a button here as well the contact seller button i forgot about that let's add a button click button click here and we have a button okay and the button is of a different subtle type let's see contact seller okay and its style let's just lighten it up a bit okay so now uh, let's click preview see how our repeating group is molding its way so we have a title an image a description and contact seller okay it's now vertical it's a column layout so now let's what do we do now uh let's change the title uh, to a better style okay heading dark that's too big so we're going to tweak the layout tab and not make it fixed width Okay, and uh, what else can we do? So we have each one is actually too big. Yeah, that's too big. Let's make it uh, H3. No, H3 is too small. H2. H2 seems about right. Okay. So vintage marketplace, amazing bike, image, description, contact seller. Okay, so now let's click our repeating group okay and look at these properties set fixed number of rows fixed number of columns if we tweak the columns to two here we have a grid okay if we tweak the columns to three we have a bigger grid okay let's click preview and see what this looks like see an amazing bike an amazing car okay uh, let's add a few listings. In fact, we don't have our button to submit a listing. Okay, so let's first place our button to In this place see I was clicking there, but it's dropped here Anyways, so let's move this around all the way to the top right. Okay submit Listing so we're gonna move it make it first So we just moved it to the very top and now here are these horizontal alignment options. Move it to the right and that's it. We're on the right. Let's add a bit of margin on the top and on the right. We have our submit listing button in the right place. So we were there in a bit, but now we're here. Okay. And now what do we want this button to do? We want this button to go to the listings page. So we're going to start edit workflow. We're going to go to a page. And we're going to go to our add your listings page. Okay, so let's just click preview and see what this looks like now. Okay, so we have our submit listings. Let's add a few listings because I think two is just two less. So, uh, what was it? Typewriter, another description, 
and let's call typewriter submit listings thank you for submitting listing and I don't remember what else did we have in our gallery a Walkman sandals and a cassette let's add three so Walkman amazing tech a Walkman sandals not a problem please here they are and television Great quality. okay so let's uh, go to our index page in fact after submitting a listing we should maybe go back to our listing page but let's avoid that for now okay in our url if we remove this we're back in our index page okay so let's see vintage marketplace amazing bike we have typewriter we have description we have contact seller our seller button doesn't do anything but we still have a bit of a the look and feel isn't that great is it so let's tune this up a little bit okay so we're back in our index page in the design tab and let's look at these now here 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 and here so all four are left aligned let's center them a bit okay so let's pick this image and in the layout tab we're gonna center it we're gonna add a little bit of a margin from the top on the listings title we're gonna add a little bit of margin on the top we're going to reduce the size of this text element so but we have checked the fit height to content box so it's just going to hug uh, the text element depending on the size of the the font size uh, we're, let's center the title a bit and this centering can be done here this little rich text editor okay if i click this rich text editor i can tune uh, justify or right align left align these things okay so let's just center this click save so our title is center aligned our image is center aligned our description let's click the description and in the layout tab let's also place it in the horizontal kind of alignment and also uncheck the fixed width okay in fact we should probably add a bit of margin on the left and on the right okay and also add a bit of margin on the left and on the right same for the button uncheck the fixed width add a bit of margin on the left and on the right probably add a bit of margin from the top and from the bottom and a bit of margin from the top let's see what this looks like now slightly better but the description can be centered as well okay so let's center the description rich text editor center save and we have a centered description as well okay we don't have a border around the whole repeating group okay we had a nice lovely border around the whole repeating group so let's uh, change that on the repeating group the repeating group has a style on it the default repeating group so styles uh, change things globally so let's click the styles tab and we can find the repeating group the default repeating group style and let's add a border to it so a solid border and let's also add a border radius on these things to around the edges a bit let's click and see what we look like starting to look nice doesn't it okay starting to look similar to this we've also rounded the edges of this uh, image so let's also round the oh the and the image is of a different size as well so let's tune this up a little bit okay so let's call this it's a fixed width and a fixed height let's make it 320 to 40 aspect ratio and uh, in our appearance 
we can the image is not using a style so let's apply a border right here a roundness of 20 pixels and let's see what this looks like yeah okay so some of them are rounded some of them are not so what's going on here so essentially uh, images can be rendered in different ways uh, and we can tweak some of the properties here to zoom them or rescale them stretch them uh, with bubble it's like a it gives you all these configurable options and it takes a while to kind of get a feel for wh what is where uh, but it's really powerful uh, so now we have our gallery which is looking pretty close to our original just the descriptions are different okay so let's see what does the contact seller button do email copy to clipboard so how do we copy to clipboard okay let's see so uh, this contact seller button let's click start edit workflow and let's try and find our action copy to clipboard we don't have it so what just happened here hmm so let's we need another action which is a copy to clipboard and what we're going to do is we're going to use a plugin for this so we're going to go to the plugin tab and we're going to add a plugin from the plugin marketplace uh, the copy to clipboard one happens to be free so let's wait a bit okay so copy to clipboard here it is copy to clipboard we install the plugin we click done and now we have our plugin so so a plugin can provide many things it can provide an element that goes in the design section or it can provide a particular action that goes here so this is written here so the plugin provides an element here copy to clipboard it also provides actions okay paste copy copy to clipboard from static test so let's go back to our buttons workflow okay and now let's see copy copy to clipboard exists okay where is it it is probably in plugins yeah so in plugins copy to clipboard from static text okay and we're gonna tell it what we're copying okay so now let's uh, take a little step back uh, into the database okay let's look at the data let's look at the listings data okay so we have a great quality television sandals walkman everything now every bubble uh, sheet or custom data type or table uh, has a few special fields the created date the modified date okay and it also has the created by okay so we're going to use this created by uh, to find out who submitted the listing and their uh, email address so I'm going to go back to the workflow tab and in our copy to clipboard from static text what text are we copying we are copying dynamic data from the database we see current sales listings because we are in a repeating group okay so inside the repeating group we can reference that particular cell okay click current cell listings this uh, creator email okay so that's how we went through the database so if i give an analogy of the uh, spreadsheet we were referencing the listings table but the listings table had a special column here let's add that column here one second so bubble adds created date modified date creator created by created by okay so test to at ascii.com in fact so the created by is actually a reference to the user so the created by is a reference to the user whole line item let's just go with email for now okay so created by is test at ascii text test to at ascii text now in my repeating group I was referencing one particular cell. I was referencing the listings table. And within the listings table, I was referencing the created by uh, user. So that's how I got to that 
seller's listed email address okay so uh, contact seller copy to clipboard current sales listings creators email okay and let's show an alert so the alert doesn't exist here what happened to our alert the alert doesn't exist here because we don't have the alert element in our canvas so let's go under design tab find the alert element click here click anywhere and scroll down we probably have it all the way here okay so let's position this alert at the top in the center uh, email copied okay and now we should be able to see alert show message in an alert box okay so let's click preview and see if things are working now so, okay contact seller contact seller contact seller email copied and let's verify did we copy the email or not yep we copied the email okay so let's see uh we're we're pretty close to completion uh vintage marketplace we have a repeating group we don't have we have our add our listing button we don't have our login sign up section okay so now what do we need to do let's add uh, a button okay uh, let's add our button sign up okay it's all the way down there let's move it all the way up there okay and all the way to the right let's add another button login let's move it all the way to the first move it all the way to the right so now uh herein lies that our column layout isn't really nice for these types what we want these elements we want these elements to be in a row okay we don't want them these elements to be in the uh a column okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a group okay so a group actually is another type of element here so this group okay a group can have a different layout okay so a group can have a row layout so the the elements inside the group behave as a row the elements outside it depends on the parent so everything's nested so our page has a column layout but our group inside has a row layout okay so let's move the group but the group itself in the page is in the column layout so let's move the group to the very top okay in fact i'll color this so that we can see it clearly okay okay so we have our group okay it's of a type row and we can move the group around in our parent column page okay uh, let's untick the fixed width box so it takes the whole page uh, our height is too much let's make it 100 pixels okay uh, let's move it at the very top okay so now we have our header at the very top okay and this is of a type uh, row okay what do we mean by this let's move these buttons inside the row okay so we're gonna right click cut and we're gonna paste them inside the group okay so inside this group which let's call it the header okay we're gonna right click and paste that login button there let's right click and cut uh and paste so look at how the buttons are responding differently let's remove this alert a bit so the buttons are not stacking as a column like they were in the page that's because the page had a layout property the container layout is column but this particular group has a container layout as a row okay and within row we have a few extra alignment options as well okay so we can align them all to the left we can align them all to the right we can space them out space around space to the left right or center stack so what do we want at the moment we want to right align all these buttons okay and let's add a little bit of margin uh, on the buttons so sign up 20 20 
login 20 20 in fact the top margin doesn't need to exist here we use the vertical alignment option each element inside can have like a vertically align it let's not use the margin here okay let's vertically align this element based on its kind of parent container type so the submit listing is still outside uh my only hesitation with using the cut here is we also have a workflow on this uh, button so the workflow won't cut and paste uh, if i remember correctly so let's uh can we move this we can't oh yes we can okay so we moved it from outside into the container let's remove the margin and also vertically align this okay so within uh the header things are stacking in a row layout okay and we can use the container alignment options to move things around at the moment we want them right aligned and within a particular container the group we can move elements around make previous next next previous login sign up okay so submit listing uh still has its workflow go to page the sign up does not have a listing uh, a workflow let's go to page sign up and login should have a go to page login okay so let's see so we have our login our sign up our submit listings and now let's see at the moment i am logged in as the user okay i did sign up and i am logged in uh, but i still see login and sign up so let's conditionally hide these buttons if i'm logged in okay so how would we do that in our design tab in our sign up button we also have this third conditional option okay let's go to the conditional option and define a particular condition when something changes its behavior so the condition we're defining is current user is logged in this element we can tweak lots of properties based on a particular condition what we want to tweak we want to make it hidden okay and let's add the same property that same conditional on the login button okay let's define a condition current user is logged in this element is visible uncheck okay so let's see what's happening now i don't see the login and sign up buttons how would i know that i'm signed up i'm logged in sorry i'm logged in at the moment let's add a text element okay here oops it went all the way to the right so let's move it around let's vertically center it let's move it to the left 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 okay and what do we want current user let's let's put their email address so we're going to use the insert dynamic data here and we're going to do concurrent user email address okay so let's see what this looks like current user email address okay so but what is this space we, we would like things to just be nicely aligned on the left so let's see in our uh, login button okay we can go to the layout and we can check this box collapse when hidden okay so collapse when hidden will so the okay what do we see the button's there i just don't see it okay if i take collapse when hidden it'll disappear okay it, it actually will kind of the space will free up so at the moment the sign up button's there but it hasn't collapsed uh, and left its space it's just invisible so let's tick the collapse when hidden uh checkbox here as well and a nicely aligned current user test to adaxi.com probably need to add a 20 pixel margin for this as well okay let's see so we have our submit we have our sign up we have our login we don't have our log out button okay so let's add a log out button here okay so we're gonna move this again layout center align it log out okay move this to the left a bit 
and 20 pixels and on this button the workflow that i'm adding is log the user out okay so if i log the user out and let's see if i click preview i see this log out button so i click log out so okay so i i now see the sign up the login and i also see this text element and i also see the log out button so now we need inverse conditions on these two to hide them if we are logged out okay so the text element conditional uh when current user is logged out this element is visible make it invisible and let's also collapse this one okay and again with the log out uh, conditional when current user is logged out make it invisible so let's see what happens there we are we did not check the collapse option so these things haven't shrunk there so let's tick the collapse when hidden option as well and now we have submit listing sign up login vintage marketplace a nice layout let's tweak our header to be the default group okay let's see yeah okay let's reflect back on our original vintage marketplace my phone amazing telephone lots of these a bit of a all images are from unsplash so i added that there as well uh, we have our sign up our login or add your listing bit of a text change during the tutorial so we have our sign up or login submit listing okay okay so let's recap what we learned okay so we started by building a marketplace uh, without coding okay using bubble.io so we can add sign up we can add login uh, we can add our listings to the database we laid out individual pages the sign up page we laid out the login page okay uh, we laid out the submit listing page we created our database the user is a special type okay we created our kind of i uh, listings table uh, we defined the fields that we wanted to save okay we defined the fields that we wanted to save here in the data types tab and the actual rows of data that's saved is in the app data tab okay so all our users are here all our listings are here and in the workflow uh, we added lots of workflow actions for things like go to page for things like uh, don't have an account go to sign up page for things like sign the user up and we added a workflow for submit a listing okay and we then created our gallery view using repeating groups okay so repeating groups were used to fetch data from the database and uh, e reference each cell as a particular type of thing uh, like we have current cell listings title current cell listings image current cell listings description context seller we added a plugin uh, which improved extended bubbles functionality by creating a new action copy to clipboard and i believe that's quite a bit now i do plan on making some more tutorials to extend this marketplace uh with more features if you would like to i, I think i have a roadmap of like maybe adding like uh, an ad approval flow and an admin dashboard that approves listings before they appear live and uh, maybe adding a checkout uh, but if you would like to see a particular type of feature added to the marketplace a particular pattern do uh, drop them in the comments below what i'm going to do as well is that i'm going to share a link to the editor so you can uh, in the settings i'm going to uh general i'm going to make it an everyone can view application so anybody will be able to uh use this url to see the application 
and uh, just to snoop around a particular setting it's read only mode so you can't break it uh, but sometimes it's like uh, you miss a step what happened how is this configured xyz so you'll be able to see a reference implementation as well uh, at the end so uh, thank you very much and uh, subscribe to the channel to be aware of more tutorials and follow on twitter as well and we'll be in touch thanks bye